Float with Henry Morgan. The sight of Dolores Pizarro aboard the Flying Gull recalled to Geoffrey Hunter painful memory of the kind of life he's lost and wishes to forget. Remembering the Dolphin Tavern, he goes there to forget in the arms of Kitty, the serving wench. Diaz, Kitty's jealous Spanish lover, finds them together and threatens to kill them both. But Kitty manages to persuade him that Geoffrey means nothing to her and that as soon as Diaz gives to her the Aztec necklet, she'll be faithful to him. The buccaneer Morgan goes to Sir Thomas Motford and promises him that if he is still free in a few years' time, he will give him the necklet. Dolores, masquerading as Antoinette de Lacy, goes into the room and sees the Aztec necklet for which he has been seeking. The most beautiful thing I have ever set my eyes on, the Aztec necklet. It is yours, Uncle Thomas. You like it, eh? Antoinette, it may be mine. Eh, Morgan? Aye, that it will be if you keep to my conditions. Conditions? What conditions are these? Sir Thomas has seen the necklace, and like every other man, he desires it. But it is mine. Yours? By what right? You're curious, wench, aren't you? It is mine, Mademoiselle de Lacy, by right of conquest. I took it from the Spanish. I look upon it as a talisman. Oh, and don't tell me, Morgan, you are becoming superstitious. Superstitious? No. But it is a talisman which will assure me of safety from treachery. Am I not right, Sir Thomas? What are you talking about? I don't intend to sail the seven seas for the rest of my life, mademoiselle. I have hopes of settling down, living a life of peace. And I wish to live long enough to enjoy that life. So I've made an agreement with Sir Thomas that if I'm still free when I wish to give up roaming the seas, he shall have the Aztec necklet. And in the meantime? In the meantime, it is mine. I thank you for it, mademoiselle. I prefer to keep it in my pocket. Well, I've kept you long enough, Sir Thomas. I know that you have another important social engagement. I'll bid you good night. Good night, Morgan. Oh, before I go, just one other little matter, mademoiselle. Yes, Captain Morgan? You are a product of the old world. I am not. I don't understand you. We call these parts the new world. On the other side of the sea, we call the old world. You're a stranger here. You know not our customs. That is true. All my life I have spent in France and in England before I came out here. Hmm. Strange. News of the new world must travel far and fast. What do you mean, Morgan? Your kinswoman, Sir Thomas, has been in this part of the world just a few short days, and yet she recognized that necklet as belonging to the Aztec race. Oh, you are mistaken, monsieur. There's no need for you to be embarrassed, mademoiselle. And I am not mistaken. You call it the Aztec necklet yourself, and we had never mentioned the word. I compliment you on being so astute and recognizing it as such. Even in France, Captain Morgan, we heard of the fabulous Aztec race. And you forgive me for saying, we have also heard of your reputation as a buccaneer. Uh, I think the word is. So naturally, when I saw the necklet, the foreign look about the work... I just naturally assumed it possibly could come from the Aztecs and, and that you had taken it from the Spanish. A remarkably quick deduction, mademoiselle. Oh, uh, there is another apology I have to make. I extended to Hunter your kind invitation to dinner, but he regrets he's unable to accept. Oh, but why? He was so nice and kind. I would like to thank him in some little way. He's a strange man, an unknown history. I don't think he wishes to mix too much with other people. Good night, Sir Thomas. Good night, mademoiselle. Who is that standing in the doorway? Come into the light of the cabin so I can see who you are. Kitty? What are you doing aboard the flying gull? Oh, Jeffrey, you must forgive me. I thought perhaps you would be coming to the Dolphin Tavern tonight. And when you didn't come, I, I thought you might have been sick. Are you mad, Kitty, coming aboard a buccaneer ship? If the men knew you were here, they would tear you to pieces. You can hold your own in the tavern, but I doubt very much if you could aboard the ship. Oh, please forgive me, Geoffrey. I, I felt I had to come and talk to you. You see, there's a lot I want to explain to you. Wait till I close the doorway. Sit down, Kitty. Thank you. When I left the tavern tonight, I, I had it all worked out in my mind what I was going to say to you. And now... 
When I'm alone face to face with you in the cabin, I... I don't know what to say. I, I don't know how to put the words into my mouth. Are you in some kind of trouble? Me in trouble? All my life I've been in trouble. But now, something's happened to me like I've never experienced before in my life. I had to come to you, Jeffrey. Please forgive me. Well, don't look so sad. And don't look so appealing. It tends to make one forget what one is talking about. Why did you come to me last night? I wanted to forget. I wanted to forget a life which is behind me, the like of which can never come my way again. I wanted to make myself realize that I no longer can walk with my head held high amongst honest men. I wanted to make myself realize that those who frequent the Dolphin Tavern are my companions until my neck is stretched on a yardarm. And it was not at all because you wanted to see me? Oh, Kitty, don't talk like that. I, I don't know what schemes you have in your mind or why you really come tonight. I'm not so desperately trying to forget my old life that I cannot know what you really are. Forgive me for being so brutal. You're not being brutal. Jeffrey, I've been bad. Whatever life serves up to me, it's what I deserve. I've lied and cheated. I've stolen and thieved. I've given what I wanted and... And I've taken what I wanted. We're talking of no account. Why have you come aboard this ship tonight? Do you believe so bad of my past that you cannot see that I love you? Get enough. Please. Oh, I know it might seem hard for you to believe it. As I've only set eyes on you a couple of times, but, but that's enough. I've never loved before, Jeffrey. You must believe me. If I didn't love you, would I have come here to the ship? Would I have walked out of the Dolphin Tavern tonight and risked any punishment to come to see you because you were not coming to see me? But, Kitty, it's incredible. I I behaved like a cad towards you. I, I should not have come to you as I did last night. Had I been in my right senses, not nearly desperate, I would not have come. But you did come. And you held me in your arms and you kissed me. And everything that's gone before me in my life means nothing to me now. They say that when a woman like me loves truly. They love more faithfully. Yes, I know, but... but In the Kitty... first place, I came to see you like the brazen hussy I was, and, and you cast me aside, as I rightfully deserved. And I said that I'd humble you. And then you came back, and you were unhappy, and I couldn't carry out no resolution, Jeffrey. I, I just had to love you. I didn't want it to happen, but it was so unexpected, like a shaft of light from heaven. But it's so hopeless. There's more than emotion. I know even though you're a buccaneer, you still can't forget you're a gentleman. And I'm just a slave servant rum at a dockside tavern. No, no, Tap, Kitty, not that. Heaven knows I'm no better than you, but... But don't you see, I can help you. I can, Jeffrey. There's no one to whom you can turn. These men aboard the ship, they're not for the likes of you. And as bad as I've been, I'll be faithful to you, I promise. Look into my eyes, Jeff. Can't you see I want to help? Can't you see it's all there written in my eyes? I do believe you, Kitty. Then don't you turn me away, please. Give me a chance to prove I can help you. For my own selfish sake, I want to. Oh, then do, do, do. Over here, Antoinette, in this part of the garden. There. Does it not give you a surprise? Oh, a beautiful rose garden. What heavenly roses, Uncle? I thought it would give you a surprise to find on this tropical island a little piece of England. Oh, they are lovely. Oh, but surely, Antoinette, you recognize the place. It's built exactly the same. Oh, don't tell me I've failed. I, I was so sure this part of the garden was an exact replica. Oh, it is. And yet you fail to recognize it. I'm so disappointed. Um, Maybe it's because there's no stream running through or no rustic bridge. Now, that's what I couldn't copy. Oh, yes, Uncle. That makes all the difference. A stream and a rustic bridge. Uh, had I seen that, I, I would have known immediately. Oh. I wonder, Antoinette, when I'll be seeing my old home again. Ah, uh, Mother Castle. A lovely place. Oh, of course, Uncle, you will be seeing it. When you retire, you will spend your declining years in its peace and serenity. Uh, there's, there's just one thing I couldn't remember, Antoinette. You can tell me. Um, and look, in this part of the garden... Uh, now, picture yourself again in the garden of the Motford Castle. Um, have I black-hearted roses or, or the Lady Fair roses growing there? Uh, oh, uh, Uncle, I would have to think... Uh, when is Captain Morgan coming to dinner? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Sometime soon. He is a very great friend of yours. 
I suppose you must discuss for hours together his plans as to where he is going to strike next against the Spanish? As a matter of fact, Antoinette Morgan makes his own plans. I, I fear he doesn't trust anyone else. I only know he has been on an expedition when he returns with his ship laden down to sea level with loot. Oh. Oh, but surely he must discuss his plans with somebody. Yes, I suppose he does. Possibly with his mate. That would be the man Hunter, wouldn't it? It is a pity, then, Master Hunter would not accept our invitation. We will have to see if we can make him, won't we, Uncle? waiting for you to appear tonight, Kitty. Hey, what are those long black bruises on your arm? Four-legged Jobson gave me a whipping. Why? Because you're not at the tavern last night? Eh? That is right. But he's within his rights. I'm only his slave. Where were you last night? No, no, no. Don't tell me. Perhaps I can guess. Oh, Kitty, don't break my heart, please. I beg of you. Oh, dear, leave me be. I can't love you anymore. I don't want you to touch me, please. You think I will let you throw me aside for this Englishman? I'll bring you the necklace very soon, I promise. Even if you bring it to me, it'll be no good, dears. I know now. You think I'll let that happen? You're not free to choose the one you love. You're a bond servant, a slave, a person to be bought and sold. So you don't want the necklace, eh? Very well, I will take the necklace. For what purpose? I will get the necklace. I'll find a buyer. He'll give me plenty of money, all the money I ask. And I will buy you from Bowleg Jobson, and you will become my property. <laughs> What complications are going to be made in Kitty's life because of her love for Jeffrey Hunter? Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan.